you are welcome to the show. Thank you. Could you please enlighten my viewers about the role of UNDP as a key player on electoral assistance in Nepal and other countries? So electoral assistance is, is a very important part of the governance work of UNDP in Nepal, but also all around the world. Every year, there's about 40 to 50 electoral support projects ongoing at any moment. And uh, UNDP has been involved in some very, very important historical, I would even say, uh, electoral um, uh, projects. And we've been supporting, for example, the independence of East Timor. And we've been supporting also elections in very uh, complex uh, environments, like in Afghanistan recently. Uh, here in Nepal, we've been involved in the 2008 and 2013 election. And needless to say that after the promulgation of the new constitution last September, we are now getting ready for new electoral uh, moments of the history of the country. And the project that UNDP has with its donors and its partners uh, stands ready to uh, promote this. But the work of UNDP is not only on the election day itself. Right? There's a lot of work that goes between uh, election moments. And uh, this has to do, for example, on uh, electoral registration. Uh, there's a lot of efforts being done by the project and the team to ensure that we add new voters. Uh, it's very important to empower people electorally uh, because that's part of their political empowerment. So last year, for example, we were able to register 700,000 new voters here in Nepal, right? a sizable amount of young people and less young who come for the first time get ready to vote. This is very important in exercising their rights but also to allow them to express you know, what it is that they want for the country, choose the programs and the candidates that they want to lead the country and deliver to them the services that they want. In addition to registration, then you also have to educate people, educate people on their rights and also how the election works. Uh, so for this, we have, um, uh, with the Electoral Commission, we have a uh, education center here in Kathmandu. I think we, since it's opened a few years back, we have already more than 22,000 visitors, mostly young people, school trips that come to the center and, and get you know, some education, some information on, on their future uh, obligation, I would even say, of, of citizens right, to uh, uh, cast their vote on the day of the election. But uh, it's also very important, in my view, to reach out to those in the more rural and more isolated parts of the country. So there, is, there are two additional centers that have recently opened, one in Pokhara and one in Dongadi in the far west. And we have uh, also mobile um, registration and education centers. Right? So we reach out to the further communities and, and to really bring more people on board. Which takes me to the other issue that is very key in this project, which is inclusion. Right? So it's not only about inclusion of men and women, but we also try to cater for specific groups that maybe find difficulties you know, in, in, in fulfilling their rights. For example, we have a very interesting program on uh, deaf um, and, and visually impaired um, uh, citizens. Right? And I think it's important that uh, their disability is not a hindrance to their capacity to also exercise their right to vote. So there's a special a dedicated uh, part of the project which develops activities uh, to enable them to uh, better understand and, and, and also on the day of the election fulfill their rights. How is UNDP Nepal currently supporting electoral cycle in Nepal? So uh, our main partner is of course the Elections Commission with, with whom we work and with them, we work in Kathmandu, but the Election Commission also has district level offices and we support them uh, both logistically and, and on the regulations that have to be uh, enforced. Um, we have worked with them on a code of conduct last year, which I think is very, very important. Uh, we know the history of Nepal uh, is uh, uh, full of uh, happy moments, but also more difficult times uh, in the contemporary history of the country. So we need to ensure that when uh, elections are called, uh, security is ensured so that the, the casting can happen you know, in, a, in a peaceful environment. Um, I was myself uh, privileged to witness a by-election, I think it was earlier last year, in Baglung. And I could see you know, a mobilization of many, many government services and uh, an enthusiasm among the citizens of Nepal to sometimes walk for hours to the closest uh, uh, election uh, voting center to be able to cast their ballot. I think this is very important and very encouraging to uh, you know, deeply root democracy 
in, in this country. How is UNDP Nepal promoting women empowerment and social inclusion in the electoral process in Nepal? Uh, I, I think this is a, a signature of UNDP. Right? And anything we do in development, we always try to ensure that social inclusion and women empowerment is, is absolutely a part, a central part of, of our interventions. Same applies to you know, electoral assistance. So in the education part of the program, we ensure that we use both men and women to encourage their peers uh, you know, to register and to come to vote on the day of election. We also, as I mentioned earlier, have a special dedicated project to targeted sections of, of the society that may have more difficulties in fulfilling their rights. So this is really an important element of, of our program here. Why this support is important for UNDP Nepal? And what is its plan for further support in electoral assistance? Well, I think elections is, is one, but an important aspect of, of democracy. Right? It's, it's, democracy is a, is a very rich notion and concept, but election is, is you know, kind of a highlight moment of, of how democracies are, are being implemented in, in, in countries. And it, it's very important because it goes down to the individual, to the citizen. Right? And, and for that person to feel empowered, to make sure that they become not an observer of the way that the country is evolving, but an actor, a decision maker. And, you know, in many countries, uh, the trust, uh, there's a lot of suspicions you know, between the political parties and the individuals, and sometimes people give up. They say, oh, those parties, they're all the same, and you know, voting doesn't make a difference. One vote, what's one vote you know, compared to so many other citizens? But I think it is very important that we change this mindset because the election is the moment uh, in, in, the, you know, in the year, in the, in, in the period of years, where individuals are given a chance to really express their position, their thoughts, and their desires for their future. Now, the project is, is uh, as I said earlier, preparing for the next elections. Uh, we know that the promulgation of the Constitution of last year will lead to new elections whether they will be central first, local second, or the other way around, um, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the project is ready to support the calendar uh, and the decisions that the government will take in terms of uh, organizing those elections. I think, as I mentioned earlier, we have already two strong experiences in Nepal in 2008 and in 2013. So we know how to organize, we know the gaps, we know the limitations, we know the strength. And we've seen in those two elections a very strong mobilization. So I'm confident that with the experience that we have accumulated with the elections commissions and all the other partners in government, uh, we will be able to deliver uh, good uh, elections for the country and move forward on the democracy. Finally, any messages to the peers? I think, you know, especially for, for the young voters, right, for the newly registered voters, I think voting is always an exciting time. And, and again, going back to the example of what I've witnessed in Baglung, it was like there was a festival in the city right, or in the villages. Uh, everybody was uh, uh, dressing up like it was an important day and they were enthusiastic about uh, going to the, to the voting center. And even if it meant, you know, uh, walking and waiting in line under the sun, uh, I could see the importance. And when we were talking with them, uh, they were all very excited you know, about this moment. And I think we need to ensure that we keep this momentum. I think it's very important uh, for the future of democracy in, in Nepal that we are able to continue mobilizing and continue sensitizing the citizens, young and older and women, men, youth, uh, to, for them to, to keep faith right, in the system. And, and I think if the quality of the voting is there and if the results are in line with expectations and the conditions, the security conditions, the logistical conditions are met. Um, I think uh, from what I've seen, there is a very, very strong appetite of, of the Nepali people to be able to be part of the decision-making process in the country and entrust their vote to representatives who will then carry their voice and carry their needs and their desires um, to, um, to Kathmandu and to the centers of government and uh, with the federal model that Nepal has chosen for itself, this is even more important because we are decentralizing you know, the decision-making powers as in centers uh, around the country. And I think people will have even more chances not only to fulfill their rights to take part in the election, but also to exercise accountability and hold those they have elected accountable to their needs 
and when the compact, the contract, you know, between the citizen and their representative is strong, then you can have trust that this country will go in the right direction on democracy and on long-term development. Thank you so much for your valuable time and information. Thank you so much. Welcome.